My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. This is um, the National Center for Environmental Information. It's at NOAA, uh, formerly known as the National Oceanographic Data Center. And what this basically shows here, this is a graph that shows energy content, uh, heat content of the oceans. And it's the standard sort of hockey stick type of looking deal here. This is 10 to the 22 joules. That's your units. This number along the side here is your factor. So this is this is by a factor of 15. That sounds like a lot. Uh, bear in mind that the ocean, the volume of the ocean is about 1.332 billion kilometers, cubic kilometers, or 0 0.3 billion cubic miles of ocean around the world. So, and, but we're only talking about the top 700 meters. The link is in the description kind of leveled off there between 1980 and 1990, but since 1990, it's basically risen by a factor of 15, the amount of heat trapped in the ocean uh, between zero and 700 meters. Cut to the chase, get to the bottom line here. We're headed into a grand solar minimum, which means that we're going to, the Earth is going to be receiving less radiant energy from the sun, um, Generally, that means you know, what I've heard some people talking about um, many ice age and things like that. Okay, the oceans are holding on to more energy, so you're going to see more evaporation from the oceans, more water vapor in circulating around the globe. But at the same time, because of the grand solar minimum and all of this, you are, you're going to have anomalously cold temperatures in the interior of continents. And then what you see now is record snowfall blankets, Erie, Pennsylvania, and so forth. So this is the recipe. The recipe is oceans are holding, because of global warming, because of the greenhouse effect, the oceans are holding on to more energy. It puts more water vapor into the air, and it just, um, you know, and you send that wetter air over the continent, which is anomalously colder, and uh, you end up with, uh, you know, more snowfall. And then, you know, the earth becomes more and more, you know, blanketed with more and more snow. And it's a, you know, it's another feedback loop. It causes the accumulation of glacier amounts of snow, essentially. So here you are. Here we are right here. And you can see the temperatures eventually they drop off. The interglacial periods last for about 10,000 years. And the time in between is about around 100,000 years. Of course, this map, this um, this graph here is a little little uglier than, uh, you know, it's not this concise square wave deal that, you know, that we've seen before. Um, and, you know, and so you see anomalous little things like, well, you know, anomalous is not really a good word. I, I've been overusing that lately, and it's it's not really a good word because, you know, there's cause and effect. There's always cause and effect. But anyway, this is basically what it looks like. And here we are here. Um, I've already done a video about this, you know, the methane off switch and all of that stuff. So... Um, when you inject water vapor into the stratosphere, it causes uh, more sunlight, you know, more radiant energy to be reflected back into space, causes cooling of the Earth. And we have all these things happening at once. Basically, everything, you know, everything happens at once. You have, an, uh, you know, areas of an, uh, that are anomalously warm and some areas are anomalously cold, but the, the ultimately the bottom line is more precipitation, more frozen precipitation. That's the bottom line. So this is, to me, this is very interesting. And uh, in all the discussions that I've seen about global warming and everything, this is probably the most compelling graph that I've seen yet right here. You know, we're talking about the hockey stick and so forth. We're talking about heat content of the oceans, and then and the graph looks like this. You know, obviously the devil's in the details. you got to, you know, look at the data and, and all that stuff. You know, there's going to be a million arguments back and forth about the validity of said and so forth and uh, but to me that's a very compelling that's a compelling graph because that's sort of a drop dead um, quantity heat content of the ocean that's that's a drop dead you know I mean you can argue back and forth about temperatures which can you know air temperatures and things like that you know which are which fluctuate 
pretty wildly a lot of times and um you know and te- you know air temperatures um can be anomalously high for a myriad of reasons that may not have anything to do with the greenhouse gas uh the greenhouse effect but when you're talking about heat content of the oceans well that's pretty much uh, yeah you know that's that's a it's got to be caused by something and to see this you know it's kind of plateaued here between 1980 and 1990 and then skyrockets again um and that's a factor of 15 so whatever the whatever the units are it's 10 to the 22 joules 10 to the 22 joules that's your units and it's up by a factor of 15 so that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to turn into venus you know because the Earth spins once every 24 hours, you know, <laughs> and, you know, the planet wobbles. And the radiant energy coming from the sun changes over time. And so we're going into a grand solar minimum. So um, to me, I, I look at this map right here, and it and it just is very telling. You're watching this, how this, what they call it, the Pineapple Express. I don't know if this would really indicative of a Pineapple Express kind of thing. I'm not saying that's what it is, but this is, you know, the Pineapple Express is a is a stream of of wet air coming in from the Pacific. Moisture comes in, it comes in over the cooler continent, and this is this is all, you know, this is a vortex here coming down. So, um this cold air is going to push down. We're going to have a little bit of cold temperatures down as far down as Florida. So just more snow, you know, and, and this is the this is the setup. So this is the setup. Just to reiterate, to make sure I got it, I got my point across here. Anomalously high temperature, ocean temperatures, and anomalously cold um, continental land temperatures or a recipe for anomalously high frozen precipitation and a buildup of said pre- precipitation which causes a reglaciation and essentially a new ice age. That's the bottom line. Which, um, when you look at the, this is the geologic record here. You know, pretty much um, all the, uh, you know, this is, from ice core data and and um, uh, muck data, whatever, how, however they they get it, you can see that these historically these changes are dramatic. Both the warming every time the warming is this skyrocket, right? That happens and it's like happens every time, right? And here we are. This is us. And then it drops off. The drop off is sometimes quicker than others. Usually, it's, it looks like it's a little more gradual. The drop back down to the low temperature state, but the you know the spike to the high temperature is always pretty much pretty much a straight line, right to the top. So there you have it. And, uh, you know, and we're not, we've been bobbling around at a lower state here than what, geologically speaking, uh, over geologic history, uh, we've achieved before. You know, there are spikes, these spikes are are higher. Uh, So, um, here we are, we're somewhere in the middle, looks like somewhere in the middle of this interglacial period, and we're due to drop off. And there's the, you know, there's the recipe. Once again, you keep harping on this same thing, but hey, that's what we're talking about. So anyway, my name is R. Crosby Lyles. Today is December 26, 2017. Thanks for watching. See you.